curse of words anymore. <laughs> of course, I never was very good at it to, to begin with, but I have to think about it. I was like, how, how do you make an A in cursive? <laughs> it's just A, right? <laughs> it is. It is intense. Well, I hope you've had a great week so far, Brother Lee. Good to see you tonight in the house of the Lord. All of you that are out this evening, fall is falling and leaves are changing. Soybeans are being cut across the street, so we know it's coming soon. <laughs> Got home from work, saw the truck pull up. I was like, honey, you better pull in the Highlander because the beans are about to get cut. Your car is going to get dirty. <laughs> sure enough, they got started before church even, even kicked in. She looked at us and goes, well, they're doing it right now. I said, I told you, they don't mess around. Oh, but it's a wonderful time of the year. I like fall. Hallelujah. Because I like winter. I'm kind of weird. I like cold. I like short days. I like when I get home at 5 o'clock and it's dark because then I don't feel like I have to do anything. <laughs> it's true. I don't feel like I have to go out and fix something or cut something or prune something or make something look pretty or plant something or do something. I can just be in the house because everything outside's dead and and done, and there's nothing else to do, so I stay home, play the guitar, work out, do something, but summertime, I stay too busy, so winter is like a hibernation for me. I enjoy the time of rest, it seems, that, that it can bring as we kind of recharge just uh, like the rest of creation does during those times, so um, got another typical Wednesday night study for you. <laughs> I just don't know when the insanity will ever end, but... Um, something that struck me this week, and you, you've already seen a little bit of it, but uh, I, I wanted to talk about it a little bit tonight and maybe help us do a few things personally. Kind of, kind of, this is kind of a journey for all of us. If you got your Bible, turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. It's a familiar scripture, but I think of it, if there's anything in Revelation that you can consistently try to tie to your life, on a regular basis, it would be about this particular church, uh, the church of Laodicea that, that the Lord addressed when he spoke to the spirits of the seven churches. He was, really kind of, he was really kind of talking to all of us in these things and, and, and types and shadows and things that we can get caught up in, you know, right? things that we can find ourselves kind of uh, trapped in sometimes, so to speak. And, when he's talking to the church at Laodicea, and you know this well, when he said to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, say as the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you're lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. And this is the part that troubles me and the part that I think that we need to, we're going to talk about a little bit tonight. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you might be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you might see. And as many as I love, aren't you glad for this scripture, I rebuke and chasten, and therefore be zealous and repent. Because behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come to him and dine with him and he with me. And to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We're going to do something a little bit different tonight. Um, if you saw the article that I posted earlier this week, it's from Jewish Voice International. I don't believe theologically with some of the things. I don't agree with him totally, the gentleman that runs that organization, but he contributes a lot to the Jewish nation. And if you've ever watched his program, JVI, Jewish Voice International, they do a lot of good works for the children of Israel. And um, there was an article that I posted earlier this week as, as um, you know, Rosh Hashanah was you know, Sunday night through Tuesday night, and the celebration of the, of the head of the year, right, the Jewish New Year. And um, I don't know if you took the time to read the article that I posted, so I, and some of you don't look at the Facebook very often, that page. So I wanted to read it to you, and there was something in here that I have really, I have feasted on this for the last couple of days personally, and I thought, wow, 
I don't, I don't know that I've ever really thought about doing this and doing it this way, and it was so inspiring um, that I thought we'd talk about it for a little while tonight, and we're going to help ourselves here with the old chalkboard in just a minute. This will be an interactive lesson again tonight, so just our session. So let me, let me quickly read this for you and kind of set your mind where, where God has, put, has kind of positioned my thinking here in the last couple of days over this. He says, the new year is like a reset button. It's a specific day when you can start fresh with renewed commitment and energy towards goals and dreams. The practice of making New Year's resolutions has been around for thousands of years. Some of the most common ones have to do with losing weight, exercising more, saving money, breaking bad habits, learning something new. Right? Each day is a new beginning, yet we can easily get lost in its ordinariness and lose sight of this gift. So when the calendar marks the new year, it's a perfect time to take stock and reflection on the previous 12 months and recommitting to good things for the coming year. January 1st, we talked about this the other day, and service rings the new year on the Gregorian calendar, and it's the time when most people make goals for the year ahead. Birthdays are another annual marker in our lives, right? Some good, some bad. Kids like them. Maybe in, you're in the middle, you don't really care. When you get older, you're thankful for them, right? <laughs> they, kinda, they take on new significance, right? Will I see another, right? <laughs> we start thinking as we age, could this be the last? But, uh, and then we've got, in the Jewish part of that, let's talk about our adopted family a little bit. We have Rosh Hashanah, which is a very spiritual thing. Now, I, you know, as I talked about this and thought about this, I was talking to my wife. I said, you know, as, as believers, we've always tried to incorporate the new year with spiritual things. We've had, we, we haven't done it in a couple of years. We've had New Year's Eve services. Most people don't want to stay up that late anymore, so we kind of quit doing them. But uh, everyone wants to stay home and go to bed early. But, but, you know, we would pray and pray in the new year and, 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 and try to bring some spiritual significance into that. But, but part of it always got kind of lost for me because on the other side of town, right, they're all drinking and partying and whooping it up, right? So it's, it's kind of lost. But... This, this Jewish holiday, when we think about the head of the year on the, the Jewish calendar, it's a very spiritual time, you know. Um, it goes on to say here that, uh, you know, beginning 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, Jewish people, Orthodox Jews that, that worship the Lord, focus their attention on reflection and repentance, examining where they have gone astray from the things which they need to turn. We can do the same, making this time of the year our season of spiritual renewal, renewal our opportunity for a new beginning. So the article goes on to say that, you know, we, what, 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 how, many, how many made New Year's resolutions this year? Whether you said them out loud or you did it, how many have kept them? All right, great. So one made it, one lost. So we're batting a 1,000 here, right? <laughs> Some of you have quit making resolutions. Why? Because you never keep them, right? Why beat yourself up? Why fail another year, right? Why have one more, uh, you know, oh, didn't do that either. Didn't lose weight, didn't make any more money, still not exercising. That lasted two weeks. You know, I ate better until I went to Dairy Queen, and then I just, you know. So <laughs> a lot of times, we, a lot of us, people quit making it. What's the point? Because I never follow through, right? And, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just as guilty. Um, and I'm being a perfectionist. A lot of times I won't do it just because I know if I can't do it, I'm just not even going to commit to it, right? Just let it go. Just not even, don't even start if you can't do it right, all right? Um, but this article goes on, and it really, it really struck me, Sister Cookie, as a way for us to kind of maybe take these three really big days of the year and maybe use them as launching points throughout the year for specific things, right? Because what is the most important thing in the world to us? God, right? It should be our relationship with God, right? That's first. Second is what? Family. Third would be? Yeah, church. Yeah. Or, or yourself, right? In that, in that, in, and in that order, right? I put my family before I, ahead of me, right? And I should put God ahead of my family. We, we, know, we know the kind of the tier that we should look at. Well, these three dates, when, you, when, you, when I read this article, Sister Kim, I thought, well, that's kind of novel. <laughs> Why couldn't I kind of set my life up that way, right? Why couldn't I take the head of the actual new year <laughs> that we really know is not the Gregorian calendar, but, but the Jewish calendar, which is as close as we would have to the real new year, and make that a spiritual renewal? And why couldn't I take January 1st and celebrate that and the Gregorian calendar as a time for personal growth or personal goals 
right? And why couldn't I make my birthday about family, about personal relationships and things? Because I mean, if you try putting all those into January 1st, you're never going to make any of them, right? You've all just, you've all, I'm, Ashton's the only one that even tried this year, right? So <laughs> we're really sorry right out of the gate. We're a sad bunch here tonight. <laughs> we're not even trying. <laughs> We've just quit trying. So how, 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 how many goals do you think we're really going to accomplish via none, right? We're not, even, we're not even setting goals anymore. We're just trying to exist, right? And, and goal setting is good. And it's good to set goals for yourself. It's good to reach. It's good to push. It's good to position ourselves because he makes that article that, that we can get caught up in the ordinariness of life, right? It's another day. You know, get, just get through another day. I, I think I told you guys a few weeks ago, this is, the first, this is the first job I've had that's really been like, I haven't punched a clock since I was a kid. So it's the first time I've punched a clock and like Monday through Friday, you know, getting ready for the weekend, right? Because now I don't have to worry about my job and I look forward to Friday night. All I want to do is get to Friday now, right? Yeah. Right? And, and you don't want Monday to come around, but, you know, everybody's working for the weekend, that old song says, right? <laughs> so, so that's kind of where it's at. And you can get caught up in that, right? So it's already Wednesday, and I, 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 when I was thinking about this, and I got up this morning, I was having coffee, and I was reading the Word, and I was thinking about this article. I thought, ah, it's already Wednesday. What have I done other than these last two days? I've just gone to work and then came home and recuperated. I really haven't accomplished. Well, I, it's been re I've been rebuilding a guitar, so I've been working on that. But, and I did clean out the refrigerator downstairs. I, I did. I actually installed some timers. I've actually done a few things. <laughs> None of them really amount to anything, I guess, in the kingdom. I've, I'm working on a guitar. I'm trying to rebuild that Schecter. I finally got a new pickup for it. I've been rebuilding that. You know what the name of that guitar is? Yeah. And it was really, I'm going to rebrand it. <laughs> anyway, um, so I've done a few things, but nothing really monumental in, in my life. And, and, and we should have some kind of, I should, you should, we should have some kind of, did I get up and pray? Yes, I did. I, I, I did some of the basic things, but read the word of the Lord. It's kind of my cereal coffee scripture thing. That's why you get a lot of, Emails from your pastor at 425 and the oh, bad pastor, you know, because that's when I'm up. <laughs> About 445, 450, I'm having coffee and cereal, and that's when I'm reading the word, and I'm looking at a couple of, a comment, a couple of uh, websites that I like to look at and get news from, so then I send you all something, I head off to work. But these three days kind of struck me, and I thought, you know what, this, this, this might be good. And, and, and here may be the challenge for some of you, and what we're going we're gonna to whiteboard a few things, is that maybe you don't know how to set a goal. Maybe you don't know what goal setting is really like for yourself. Maybe you've never tried it. Or maybe you've tried it and failed. Okay, we, let's just back up. We've all tried it and obviously failed because we don't even do it anymore. Nobody even made one resolution except for Ashton, and he failed. But at least you tried. At least you set one, all right? So you got one up on everybody else here that at least you set a resolution for yourself. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. And there's nothing wrong with failure sometimes, right? There's not. Because now if you want to set another resolution, you've now got something to base that off of, right? <laughs> you know, if you're, in, if you're in scientists or things like that, you kind of call that a baseline, right? You've at least got something to work. If you got nothing, you don't know where, you don't know where to start. But at least you got, you got, at least got a failure, <laughs> right? I've at least got a failure. I know how not to succeed <laughs> if I set a goal for myself because that didn't work. Okay, now we've got a baseline to kind of build off of. And a lot of times, like I said, we, we're, we're, I think we're challenged with doing that and setting goals for ourselves. Um, life is too precious. Every day is a gift, right? I could wax very cliche here, right, for the next 10, 15 minutes, but I'll save us the time. But it is, it is a gift, and we are all guilty of getting caught up in the inertia of just getting through the day. Right? We have to do dishes. We have to vacuum the floor. We have to make dinner. We have to go to work. We got to feed the chickens. We got to take care of the kids. We, we got stuff. But all of a sudden, those busy days that really have had no direction or drive or purpose turn into weeks, turn into months, turn into years, turn into decades where people have gone, What did I do? Right? The money I made's all spent. <laughs> The things that I fixed are all broke again, you know. All the things I bought are gone. We can look back at that and have a lot of, have a lot of regrets, right, about the things that we could have done, woulda, shoulda, coulda, right? So when, when you talk about goal setting or, or setting some, 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 some things 
that you would like to accomplish, you know, there's a couple of rules in that. And, and, and you know, first of all, you know, sometimes you can't dream too big. You know, maybe the goal is huge, but you got to take steps, right? We went to the moon, right? We landed a man on the moon, but we didn't just build a spaceship and go to the moon, right? We, we, we failed and blew a lot of rockets up till we finally figured out how we could get one up. And then once they could get one up, could they actually get one to orbit? And then once they got one to orbit, they stuck a you know, monkey in it. And you know, the monkey went around. What was that monkey's name? Anybody for a thousand points? I remember that monkey had a name. I remember he was in my, I remember in my textbooks, in my school, you know, that monkey that NASA sent up before, before they went up. And then, you know, then men went up and orbited the earth a couple of times. And, you know, so it, there, were st- there were steps that they took to reach their ultimate goal, which was to, to land, and land on the moon and put a man on the moon. And, um, and, and really, when we, try, when we in our lives are trying to grow and, and accomplish things, we have to kind of look at that the same way. There needs to be an ultimate goal that we want to get to or something that we would like to attain. And then it's the measurement of how do you get there and what steps do you take to move toward that goal. So, like I said, personally, these th- these, this really kind of struck me as a way to kind of dissect the year a little bit. Now, everybody, Rosh Hashanah falls on the same lunar day, you know, and the Gregorian calendar, January 1st, falls on the new, but your birthday is going to be a little different. Some of you may have birthdays piled right next to this or right in between this or, or whatever. Mine would be really great because it's in July, and July would be my birthday, and then September would be a Rosh Hashanah, close to October, and then Christmas. So I, I kind of break those up a little bit. Some of you may be a little bit closer from a, cal- cal- a cal- calendrical, a calendrical cycle. Is that a good word? It's a big word. It's a nice word if it's not a real word. Um, but this would be a great calendar sequence to kind of maybe focus some goal setting for you individually. And then collectively, what happens if every one of us here starts to grow? Yeah, we grow as a whole. What if everybody moves up one notch on the spiritual belt this year, improves their personal life a little bit, whatever that is, right? What if everybody here rebuilds or establishes a, another relationship, a lost family member or a neighbor or whatever it might be, and grows that and fosters that in a calendar year. Think of, think of what that does to the body as a whole as we all start get, to get lifted up together, right? If one of us is, is, is just out there tearing it up, everybody else is not really benefiting from it, right? My goals aren't, can't be your goals. My personal victories Maybe where they may rub off on you a little bit in ministry won't necessarily boost you like they'll boost me, right? So think about goal setting. So if you read the back of this article, there were a lot of really good questions on this, and Nessus don't necessarily want to to go through those. Um, who's got good handwriting? Jeremy hates to do it. All right. So so let's. <laughs> Well, I was sanding primer seeds all day, too, so. Yeah. Because this sound, whew, it gets me. I was thinking about the sound of chalk on a board today, and I was getting the willies. Just to think about it. I, I, So think about three areas of our lives that we can improve upon, right? Spiritual, all right, personal, and family. Three things that we can try to walk, we could try to work around the calendar, right? So again, spiritual, a great, a great time of that would be for Rosh Hashanah, all right? That's supposed to be an NAH, right? Personal could be your birthday. And uh, no, that's, 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 that's January 1. And then family would be your birthday. Right? That's the day that we, as I said earlier, we kind of we turn the calendar on our lives. We think about family, friends, relationships, you know, where we've been, where we're going, what we haven't done, and things like that. I don't get that melancholy about that on January 1st. Like, again, I, I, when, when the, this article hit, I really thought, this, is, this really does seem to resonate with me, that this is kind of the way that I'm geared. 
New Year's is always very personal. My birthday has been always very family oriented and kind of the passing of time and friends. And then where's kind of the spiritual thing come in? I know we repent every day and we die daily and we can there again wax very, uh, uh, I can use a lot of, uh, um, of those great catchphrases to do that. But, but, but when do we really set, a, set, a, set aside a time for repentance? Well, we, it's already there for us really if we want to borrow a little bit from our Jewish brethren. There's already a time when that happens. Now, like I said, 30 days before Rosh Hashanah is when an Orthodox Jew would start to contemplate the previous year and things that they would like to do. And then on Rosh Hashanah, they celebrate the head of the year. Then it's the 10 days of awe, or there's 10 days of repentance between that and Yom Kippur, right? The Day of Atonement. So it's a very, it's a very repentant time, and it's a very soul-searching time spiritually to change those type of things. So I was thinking, it's like, how, how would we talk about setting a goal? Well, something that might relate to a lot more people than just getting really creative. I've done a lot of this stuff in business meetings. They take, they take hours, and they can be really boring. But I thought, you know what? When you go to, so let's put it in this context. When you, when you go on vacation, how, how, does that, how does that whole thought process start? If you want to go on vacation. Okay, great. Yeah, we that last two years when we our family vacations have been we went to where did we go Georgia and then we went to Galveston two places I've never been to and why did we go I don't know because that's where my wife picked but first of all and that's not my choice see you have, the one thing I have learned I really don't care where we go just let's just go right where do you want to go on vacation honey and that's kind of what it is so now it's turned into a her Bethany thing and Andy and I just tag along right so that's the family that's just kind of what we do it's the family vacation so. And whether you go near or far, whatever that might be. But the first thing, yeah, you have to decide, you know, where, right? So you have to set a goal. Where do you want to go? And, and you can write some of this stuff down, and we'll dovetail it. We may pick it up next week if we don't get through it. So where do you want to go? Okay. Well, let's just pick a spot. I want to go to Alaska this year. Right? Okay. So we know where we're going to go, right? Okay. What would be the next question? When are we going to go? Okay. Very important. How much time off do I have, right? So where do I want to go? When do I want to go? What else? How am I going to get there? <laughs> I'm going to fly, take a train, walk, hitchhike, whatever, right? <laughs> so how are we going to get there? Um, you know, transport, right? I'll just keep it, keep it close. So how are we going to get there? So where do we want to go? When are we going to go? How are we going to go? What else? Huh? My what? <laughs> What's it going to cost? Right? <laughs> you know, it's going to cost a lot, a lot to go to Alaska. It won't quite so much. If we go on a vacation in Crawleyville, that won't cost us a whole lot. <laughs> right? We can be down there and back in a day, right? No, well, that big thing. Nobody's going to read our Facebook posts about that either. But if we go to Alaska, you know, it's a big deal. Right? So what would you say? How much is it going to cost? Oh, that's right. Yeah, how much is it going to cost, right? So... So, so the cost, what's it going to cost us to go on this vacation, right? Do we have the funds? Do we need more funds? Do we have to raise more funds? Do we have to save more funds? There's a lot that goes, I got about 30 things that I wrote down about vacation. That's how weird our vacations are. What else? Who are you going to take with you? Take with you? <laughs> right? That's, and that's, that's an important decision, right? I've, ta- I've gone on vacation with People that I don't ever want to go on vacation with again. Why? Because they didn't, they didn't really add value to the journey, right? They kind of drug the vacation down, right? And anyway, so we'll leave it at that because I think we're going to go live, so I don't want to mention any names. So, right? This is great chalk. Well, I should have got the, My wife had one of those great big fat, like one inches. I should have got the kitty chalk. What, who are you going to take? Who are you going to go with? Yeah, so, so who? So who, who are you going to take along on the journey? Who, who do you want to go on vacation with? Just the wifey and I taking the kids. What else? How long are you going to be gone? How long is it going to go? Yeah. These are going to be great. So how long? Along with that is how long does it take to get there? That's what we always say. Well, where do you want to go on vacation? Well, let's go here. Well, it takes two days to get there. That burns up two days vacation. I don't know if we want to go that far or not, right? Because I don't have that much vacation time left. So sometimes, how, how, how long are you going to go? How long is it going to take to get there? Gas was four dollars and whatever cents a gallon last year. We kept going up, and like we already had our room, our little thing booked like a year in advance. We're thinking, 
We just kept watching the price of the vacation go higher and higher, which meant we were going to do less things once we got there, you know, because gas, good Lord, like doubled from when we booked the, booked the place and what we had planned for, for expenses. So, so how long? So what else? What do I need to pack? <laughs> oh, that's a fun question asked around our house when we go on vacation, right? Um, so what do, I, what do I pack? I know this is like a vacation, but we'll, we'll turn this into good stuff. Yeah. Because, and my wife may watch this. She said, are you going to record this tonight? I said, certainly. She goes, good, I want to watch that. I'm going to say, because suffice it to say, wherever we're going on vacation, my wife does not have a pair of shoes that works. <laughs> There's always new shoes purchased on vacation. There's new outfits purchased on vacation. I don't have, I don't have the right shoes to go there. Didn't know you needed the right shoes to go there, but far be it from me to argue with her. So what, what, what do I need? What am I going to pack? Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's not worth it. <laughs> Let's just stay home. No, Kayla. That's what 11 people did last year and said, no, it's too hard. I don't even want to, I don't even want to set a goal. I don't even want to make the journey. I just would rather sit here. <laughs> I, I, know what you, I know what you're saying. But that doesn't work with my exercise tonight. <laughs> I'm already here. I know when I'm going to be there. I don't need anything. It's not going to cost me anything. I'm not taking anybody with me. I'm going to be here forever, and I don't need to take anything with me. So, see, it just doesn't work to stay home. Anything else? Any, any, you're... Okay, oh, well, we'll put it all down there. We're, we're, so, where are you going to stay? Yeah? Where are we going to eat? Where are we going to eat? Food's a big expense when you go on vacation, yeah. right? That's why we rented a house so we could go to Walmart and eat in a lot. And then gas kept going up, so we ate in a lot more than we had planned on it. We X'd a couple of eat-out meals and, and turned those into, you know, bologna and cheese at the at the counter there at the little place that we rented. Food, all right. Anything else? Are we going to do any stops on the way? Oh, that was, that's one of mine right there, yeah. So stops along the way. Because I can tell you, if you ever go to Galveston, you've got to stop in Marshall, Texas and go to Bodacious Barbecue. That's a stop along the way, right? It's a marker now because we stopped on our way back. It was the best chopped pork I've ever had in my life, period, hands down. Going back to Texas next time, I want a good barbecue. That's good. There's some good stuff there. Stops along the way. So where, when, how, cost, who do you want to go with, how long, what do I pack, stay, food, stop along the way. There's a lot that goes into going on vacation when you think about it, right? Do I? <laughs> Sometimes the thought crosses our mind, right? <laughs> yeah, right? You go to some places. Sometimes it can be a disaster, right? Sometimes the weather. There's going to be unforeseen things that you have no idea, you know, that are going to happen. Unforeseen circumstances. You try to... The unforeseen. You try to pack. If you go to Florida, what do you need? Umbrellas. All right, rain jackets, stuff like that. We're going to Alaska, though. We don't know how cold it's going to be, right? We're going to have to take our parkas and pack an extra suitcase just for, you know, muckalucks and gloves and all that other stuff that you might need, right? So there, there's, there's unforeseen. For, uh, there's a guy at work went to Florida this week. <laughs> you know, him and his wife and five kids went to Disney World. Guess where they are right now? They're stuck on some highway trying to get out of Florida. I found out this morning. They didn't leave the day that they should have left, and they left this morning, and he called one of the guys at work and said, yeah, we're stuck on the highway. They're anticipating this. We may never outrun the storm. We may be sitting on the side of the highway somewhere riding out whatever hits northern Florida. So anyway, yeah, there's a lot of unforeseen things that can happen, right, even when you're there. You can, you can plan all of this, and then it's, it can get washed out because of weather, right? So sometimes you need to have an alternate plan, right? So my sister-in-law, she may watch this, I don't know, but my sister-in-law loves to, loves to plan like every day of the vacation. I don't. I just like to get there and then just figure it out, right? 
Well, we, we, like we went to Galveston last year. There's a couple things we wanted to see. We wanted to go to the Kennedy Space Center, which was fine. Andy wanted to go eat the biggest chicken fried steak in Texas. That was fine. Um, you know, we were gonna, went to the ocean a couple, you know, two or three times. That was fine. And my wife, oh, because that, if you guys are watching that show, Restoring Galveston, that's why we went to Galveston, because she watched some girls fixing up homes in Galveston. She thought that looked like a fun place to be. And it was wonderful. It was really, I don't know that I ever go back, but it was a great, it was a great vacation. It's a neat place to see. It's a very unique culture, blah, 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 blah. But um, so, you know, there was an ice cream shop and a store or something else that she and Bethany wanted to go see. So we did all that. But I don't like to pick the day. I just like to go and kind of wing it, right? Because we were going to the ocean a couple times. So you had to kind of play it by ear with the weather, things like that, right? So, so you kind of had to have alternatives. You kind of had to know that there were going to be some derailments. Even the best laid plans can go awry, right? So, hey, we're going to go to Florida. You probably plan this Disney vacation for a year, and what happens? A hurricane comes, right? You just can't, you can't plan for that kind of stuff. And, and, and uh, you got to have plan, what's plan B, just in case something like that happens? There's going to be derailments. There's going to be things happen, even on a fun time away. So this is just to go on vacation, right? The things that we think of, you have to think about, the things you have to plan. And, and, and if you do well in a lot of these areas, it can really make a vacation much more pleasant right? If you've done your best to prepare, if you know where you're going to go, when you're going to go, how you're going to go, you know, I'm, when, I'm, we usually drive our car, so I plan way ahead, change oil, check tires, get all the work done, because you want to have good transportation, right? And you, you think about the cost, you've got enough money, so you're not worrying about if you could have a good time, and hopefully you like the people you're going with, and you, you, know, you know how long you're going to be there, so you know when you're going to come back, so hey, who's going to feed the chickens, who's going to cut the grass, right, all those other things get planned. There's a lot that goes into planning a good vacation, and if it's planned well, it's a lot more enjoyable. If you've got alternate plans, if it rains this day, we'll do this. If the sun's out, we'll do that, right, and, and kind of go with it, but leave a couple of these things out, and, and, a, and, and a, you know, a, a big event can turn out disastrous, right? Can be, can be terrible. You could, then the next year you would just be a Kayla and say, well, let's, stay, let's just stay home. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere. Last year was a disaster. I would have rather just stuck a stick in my eye and stayed home, right? And gone to the ER <laughs> than, than have gone on that vacation. Now, we're not talking National Lampoon vacations. Those were always bad, but, you know, um, in more ways than one. But, so when you, if we go to set a goal for ourselves and don't really consider, not this, but I, I use this as an example that, of, of things that you need to think about, right? I want to lose weight. Okay, great. How does that work, right? There's a lot that could go into making that decision, right? Because we've worked very hard to get to the shape that we're in. That was easy, Right? And getting back to where we want to be is much more difficult, right? So it's going to take a lot more dedication, a lot more perseverance, a lot more sacrifice. You can say that, right? Because we could all stand at least a little bit, right? You know, whatever that is. Or whatever it is, healthy or, or, I don't think this works here, but, you know, I want to quit drinking or I want to do whatever, right? You know, personal goals. But goal setting can't just be an idea. I want to go on vacation. Well, that's, that's not good enough, right? It, it takes more than that. Well, I want to get closer to the Lord. Who doesn't? Okay. But getting closer to God is a very generic statement, right? And it's different. That statement is different. If I just said, I want us all to get closer to God, the congregation would say, amen. Who wants to get closer to God? How are you going to get there? I don't know. And what does that look like? Getting closer to God for Kim looks different than getting closer to God for Alvin. Or for me and Lee, right? It's a different journey for every one of us. Getting in shape is, is, is different for every one of us. Losing weight would be different for every one of us. Um, building relationships with family would be different for every one of us, right? Because we're all at a different level. So there's not this one size fits all. So when we set goals for ourselves, we want to grow and, and push ourselves and and and. and draw closer to God, become a better person or, or help ourselves in whatever or, or, or put ourselves in there with a relationship kind of building or fostering growth in our family and friends and relationships and people. It takes work, but it takes, you, you got to have a plan, right? If you fail to plan, you do what? 
Yeah, and then you usually do. Thank you, Ashton, right? Did you, did you have a really good plan for your New Year's resolution goal? Okay. <laughs> now that sounds noble, doesn't it? Yeah. Ashton wanted to fast and, 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 and do something. I want to see some things change in his life. So I'm just going to eat broccoli, chicken, and rice. Well, you just eat one big meal a day. Yeah, I just eat one big meal a day. All right. That's not a lot of fun, is it? No. No. Because no. everybody else is eating three. <laughs> Then you go out and you go, well, I've already had my meal for the day. What'd you have? It's chicken, broccoli, and rice again. <laughs> oh, good. We're having pizza. So you sit here and enjoy. Watch us eat, right? Uh, so you lost that, right, after a while. You probably didn't really count the cost, did you? It sounded good. It's a good goal, right? But, boy, the body doesn't like it when you just turn on a dime, does it? It hurts. One day fast isn't bad, but you go for a week, you better, you better ramp up. You better build up to that a little bit, huh? I don't care how spiritual you are, your body will hurt (laughs) and hurt bad if you just quit eating today, right? If you want to go on an extended fast, there's smart ways to do that, right? So you got to plan that out. Setting goals for ourselves is very much the same way. We just can't poof an idea. And that's what we do on January 1st. That's why all of you didn't do it last year, right? (laughs) It's us. None of us set a resolution except for Ashton, right? Because we failed at the past. We probably haven't done a good job counting the cost. Well, it's January 1st. I better give up something. <laughs> I better say I want to do something more or I want to better myself at something because that's what we do on January 1st. Here's my resolution. I just thought about it 10 minutes ago and, uh, you know, and, you know, a couple of weeks later, it's done. By January 31st, they say 85% of all resolutions are already shot. They're gone because people don't count the cost. They don't plan something. I don't think in advance. You think about the pattern of Rosh Hashanah with an Orthodox Jew that they spend 30 days contemplating the things that they want to improve upon so that when Rosh Hashanah comes and they launch into a new year, then they spend 10 days repenting over the things that they've not successfully done and the things that they want to change in their lives and the things that they would like to to do in their spiritual walk with God over the course of the next year. That's 40 days of intending to do one or two or maybe three things in their spiritual walk with the Lord. Maybe I've not prayed enough or I've not been to Sabbath or or synagogue enough or whatever it would be for a Jew. And for us as believers, very much the very same thing, right? And they're, They're very generic Probably if we listed all the things, if I flip the board over and say, okay, everybody said amen, they all want to get closer to God, let's, let's list the things that we'd fill this chalkboard up. Multiple, I'd be erasing and writing over because we could all come up with hundreds and hundreds of things that we could probably do to get closer to God. And the generic ones would be what? I need to pray more. I need to fast more. I need to read my Bible more, right? So we could, we could all come up with those. And I could, I could come up with the, 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 the ark, <laughs> resolution list, right? Here's the things that you're all going to do. I need you to pray more, fast more, read your Bible more, right? And if I just said that, and, and, you guys, and I said, would you all do that, please? And you all said, yes, pastor, we'd all do that. And that's going to last, you know, about three weeks, right? Chicken, rice, and broccoli, right? And I'm going to get kind of old, right? Because I hadn't put a lot of thought into that. I didn't put much thought into <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you didn't. Thank you for playing the game tonight. There's a special prize for you afterwards. <laughs> Amen. But think about what, what if you could just improve one thing in all three of those areas this year? What if you could just pick one thing that you needed to do in your walk with the Lord, in your relationship with family, friends, and for you personally, for your own personal life? Whatever that might be. We could just add one thing. And you could do them not all at once, but kind of space them out over the course of a year. And I just think this little time capsule thing of these three dates is kind of, ooh, it's kind of like an epiphany that I had when I read that. I was like, this is brilliant. How come I, nobody's really said that to me before? I've tried to always loop them all into one. And then, like you say, I'm like with you. We just quit doing it, right? Because, it's, oh, it's worldly, right? It's old anxiety and blah, 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 and, and that's not really for us as believers, and every day is repentant, and, and, and we can use a lot of those excuses to kind of blow all that off, right? 
Well, we have a great opportunity to think about this. And this wouldn't be something I would even say tonight. I even thought about it when I was putting this together last night. I was reading through and studying a couple of things. I thought, well, we ought to put a big list together. Uh, you know, because again, that probably will, we would be very generic. You haven't had a lot of time to think about it. They would probably be, we need to pray more, fast more, read the Bible more, right? right. But see what, what Sister Cookie would, would, would think about, what do I need to do to get closer to the Lord? What, what spiritual goal do I need to set for myself, right? It might include some of those, but it might even be removing some things. A lot of times, our distance from the Lord is because we have filled our lives. <laughs> some of it's addition by subtraction for some. may not be for you, but it might be for someone. And what are you going to do? Well, maybe sometimes it's not so much what I'm going to do, it's what I'm not going to do so that I can maybe find time. If I can remove some things from my life, and that may take some time, so that then I could replace those things, you know, with that. Well, wow, if that's, then if that's really what it is, can you just do that today? Or can you do it tomorrow? Would it take you two weeks, three weeks, a month? Is it a 60-day? Something I need to remove slowly from my, right? If I said, give me all, I'm your pastor. You guys trust me? Anybody here not trust me? What if I said, give me your phones. I'm going to keep them for a week. You've got, oh, uh, yeah, pet Jimmy, you can have it. No, you'd be in withdrawals in about an hour. When you lay down in bed, you turn, oh, that's right, pastor's got my phone. You wake up in the morning and go, honey, where's my, oh, that's right, pastor's got my phone. What's the weather like? What, who put something on Facebook? Is, is there new, any, any new postings on Stratocaster, the Stratocaster group? You know, <laughs> that's what I look at, right? The Tele group, the Stratocaster group, the, the PRS group, right? the Epiphone group, all right. That's the people I follow, all right? What? Oh, I did that for three years. That wouldn't be a thing. For three years, I didn't eat meat, drink coffee, soda pop, candy bars, or, ch or chips for three years. Why? Because I just felt like doing it. I broke it when I went to the Dominican because all they drink is soda pop and they eat a lot of meat. <laughs> and it's either that or eat rice and beans all the time. <laughs> I wasn't going to do that. So, But yeah, no, I can, you know. For some, and some people can do things easier than others. Again, if I, universal goal setting doesn't work for everybody. What's easy for me to give up may not be easy for you to give up. All right? But what, I think all of us, if we were honest with ourselves, would say, there's things I need to do. There's things I'd like to do. There's things I need to do. There's things I need to get rid of. <laughs> things I need to exchange for time with, if I think about all of those, for me, my family, and God. Right? We, 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 I don't care how much money you've got or, or what your social status is. We are hunters and gatherers. <laughs> And we collect, right? We have things. And especially in this day and age, there's so much stuff that we can fill our lives with, right? If it's no bigger than the size of that screen, it can fill your life and rob you of time, precious time, in all three of these areas, right? You also, you know, I'll just give you my phone. You would, you would, you would, I'm telling you, it would be worse than, than coming off a of heroin if I had to take your cell phone. Work phone, yeah, you work phone, that wouldn't be hard, right? <laughs> Brother Lee be running on here, free at last, free at last, praise God Almighty, I'm free at last. <laughs> I know, I am free. <laughs> I give that up. <laughs> Almost six months of blessed freedom. Nobody calls me on the weekends. Nobody calls me at three in the morning wanting to know how oh, somebody just ran over a gas pump. Somebody just held up one of your stores, you know. Nobody showed up for work, blah, blah, blah. I don't do that anymore. I just sand out little primer seeds and spray paint little sanded spots and then I punch out and go home don't care all right so there's something glorious about it I ain't got as much money as I used to but I got a whole lot more peace of mind so anyway yeah yeah Lee would give me his work phone you know but but uh, some of that's hard you know we don't think it is but but it is so sometimes setting goal setting a goal setting a destination planning a journey for every one of you would be different but but really the first thing the really that first question which everybody kind of agrees to is where where do you want to go and where are you at now? Where do you want to end up? That's, that's an important part of setting a goal. Where, where do I want to be? All right. Now, I'm not going to get there tomorrow. I don't know if my wife's planned our vacation for next year or not. I don't think so because she hasn't told me. But, but she needs to hurry up because I don't have as much money as I used to. Oh, my God, it's going it's to be different this year than it was last year. Last year I had more money. This year I won't. 
right? So I'm going to have to save more or cut something back, right? Sacrifice something. So it's going to be different if I want to go. I'll have more time. I've got more PTO now than I used to. I've got more time to go places. Um, but, but, but how does that look? It'll be different this year. And, and that changes as we, as we grow in grace with God, as we grow in relationships with family, as we age. You know? Mike, would you like to be healthier? Sure. You want to go out and start running marathons with me tomorrow? So would I. <laughs> at 59 and at 70, whatever, right? It takes on a whole different meaning than it would when I was 29 and you were 30-something, right? So even with age, the way that we look at what we want to do is different. Now, just getting up and walking across the floor without pain <laughs> is a victory, right? <laughs> right? So our goals change even as we age. So for what, what, what works for him... Per, let's, let's talk about health. What works for him doesn't work for me. It won't work for you. Beautiful. Are you successful at it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This year. All right. But, but you I have. have. Yeah. I have done it. Yeah. Awesome. But that was when I came to the Lord. Uh, first, first came to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't been able to do it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes those small victories, though, give you some hope. And I can do it. Like you said, take, pass, take coffee away from pastor for three years. Well, I, I don't necessarily want you to. But I did it voluntarily for three years. I just said, I'm just going to get healthy. That's when we were living in Arkansas. And, you know, it wasn't because we didn't have money to buy coffee or something like that. We, I was making good money and we a nice place and blah, blah, blah. And I just said, I don't want to do it. And I just quit doing it. And I just one day just quit and didn't do it for three years, you know. And um, anyway, but not everybody can do that, right? So, so but, but, but figuring out where you're going to go and, and, and when are you going to start? I don't want everybody to go home tomorrow and call me up and I say, your assignment tonight is by tomorrow morning, everyone have a spiritual, personal, and family goal, you know, that you want to attain. Here's again. Some of this may take thought. Hopefully some of this will spark someone to go home and say, you know what, maybe, maybe this, we're not going to institute church-wide repentance every, you know, blah, 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 blah. Are you okay? Turn in your goal by midnight, you know, Rosh Hashanah time, all right? <laughs> you know, or your membership is, you know, you, 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 we're not going to go there. But it may be a great thing, again, for us to kind of celebrate and, and to think about it. Plan on my calendar, right? A couple things we could do corporately. We could certainly do January 1st and, and certainly could do Rosh Hashanah because those are calendrical things for all of us. But your birthday is going to fall a little bit differently. And how do you want to do that? Setting goals should be, we used to, call, we used to have what we called SMART goals. When I was in the business world a lot, we called, they called SMART goals. Some of the words were interchangeable, but they were specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. And any time that we would set a goal, we kind of had to ask yourself those five questions. Are they specific? Right? Are they measurable? Are they attainable? Are they realistic? And are they time-bound? Because it was like, okay, what do we want to do? I have to think. <laughs> Where are we at? Where do we want to go, right? Is that goal even reachable, or are we just aiming for something that we'll never even attain? So, so why, why put something out there that you can't even get to? Let's make it attainable. Maybe it's a small step, and then we get there, and then we move our goals. You know? Is it realistic, and is it time-bound? And those are the questions we always ask. If somebody said, we're going to do something, here's what I want to do, I would ask those, them those very same questions. Hey, Mr. Friels, we got this great idea. What it is? Okay. It, let me ask you five questions. Is it specific, <laughs> measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound? And you can put those same five questions to something that you want to do spiritually. I want to grow closer to the Lord. Okay. Well, how exactly do you want to grow closer to the Lord? In what area? Is it church attendance? That could be a good one, right? That's pretty easy to do. You know, when the church doors are open, you start making plans to be here, right? If you're not sick, you're dead or dying, right? Those are the only excuses, right? If you're sick, you're dead or dying. Um, if you're dead, we'll see you here. Anyway, one more time, <laughs> you know, but uh, at least in, in, in body, maybe not in spirit. But uh, <laughs> unless you come up out of that coffin, hallelujah, and then we'd really shout, wouldn't we? Amen. Um, 
But is it specific? What's specific? How specifically do you want to change? How, how specifically do you want to go closer to the Lord, right? How will you know? <laughs> how will you know? Okay, well, if it's measurable, and you can use this for a spiritual goal, how close am I now? In what areas of my life do I feel like I'm not close to the Lord? What things did I think I need to get closer to the Lord in, right? I, I think I'm here. I'd like to be here. Okay. Well, good. Is that attainable? You know? Well, they say, hey, Jesus, when you get to heaven, could my son sit on the left and the right-hand side of you? Right. Well, that's a pretty good goal, <laughs> right? Very specific. When you get to glory, can my two sons sit on either side of you? That's a specific goal, right? It's measurable. They're here. I would like them there. Is it attainable? Well, I guess every, you know, heaven is attainable. You can get to glory. Is it realistic that both of your two sons are the only two that are going to sit on the left hand? Well, probably not. So we probably have to stop at the realistic part, you know. Uh, so it probably wouldn't pass the smart goals, but, but it is a goal, right? That's closer to the Lord. <laughs> I want to get closer to the Lord. I want to sit next to the throne in glory. I want that to be my chair <laughs> right next to Jesus. That's a great goal. That's close <laughs> to the Lord, but probably not going to pass the smart test, right? So how does that look? Is it attainable? What I want to do, what I, how I want to grow with the Lord, is it attainable? Well, I think anything that we want to do, especially in our spiritual thing, is there. When you start applying this to personal and to family goals, uh -uh, you know, relationship things, it may be a challenge. You know? Is it realistic and time-bound? Because we should put, we should, you can't just throw something out there and see if it sticks, right? I want to grow closer to the Lord in X. I know where I'm at. I'm here. And you have to be honest with yourself. I pray three times a week, not three times a day, right? I'd like to get closer to God in prayer. I need to get to the point where I can at least pray once a day. Now, I know, that, you know gee, Pastor, that's not that. Well, well, trust me, a lot of us could put ourselves in that goal. How many pray every single day? Every single day, you've never missed a day of prayer. Okay, great. So that could be a goal, right? I, had a, I was working with a gentleman today. He said, you know what I've been doing since, I'm, since I met you? I said, what's that? He goes, you've sparked, he's Church of Christ. He's got a long way to go. But he said, for the last four weeks, every morning before I, my feet hit the floor, I, I pray. I thank God for giving me another day. I said, well, Anthony, that's awesome, right? That's how we ought to start our day, right? Because it's just a short prayer, but it's a prayer. And I've been doing it every morning. You know? Good, good. Now, Larry Lee would say, why can't you pray one hour, right? But maybe that's a goal. But why don't you grow into that goal? <laughs> okay, right now I pray three times a week. I'd like to pray seven times a week, even if it's five minutes. How do you make that work? How do you fit that in? Something's probably got to go so something can come in. Right? You move over to your personal life. Whatever it is. I want to grow taller. I want to grow shorter. I want to get skinnier. I want to, you know, whatever. Right? I want to run a marathon. I want to do this. I want to do that. Right? It doesn't happen tomorrow. I needed some knee replacements first before I could run a marathon. Right? That's going to take a little while. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, brother, we, would, we, we wouldn't do good in a three-legged race right now. <laughs> Your bionic leg to move, yeah. Oh, goodness, mercy, mercy, mercy. Um, but three, three great times that I think that we could incorporate into our lives to go closer to the Lord, to take care of ourselves better, which I believe... We should, right? I believe we should take care of ourselves the best that we can. This body is what? It's the temple of God, right? And, and, and well, it's, gonna, it's not going to last forever, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to glory. Just let this thing go. No, I don't believe God wants us to do that either, right? I believe that we've been given a, an obligation to do that. Doesn't, I don't know that we're judged because we do a good job or a bad job with that, but I believe that God requires us to do the best job that we can, right? And take care of these bodies. We're a reflection of the image of God, right? You can say that anyway, we, we, you know, whatever. You know, and a lot of that's projected by our inner person, but, but still, um, taking care of ourselves and being good to ourselves and taking care of this body that God gave us, right? It's temporal, it's fleshly, but still God given. And this breath is precious. <sighs> Yahweh, I love that thing we talked about Yahweh. <sighs> it's the breath, right? God gives us our first breath, and when our last breath goes, we go with him. That's, God, that's a powerful, beautiful statement. My, my goodness, that has revolutionized my thinking. That, Yahweh, it's the breath. Inhale, 
exhale. The very, the very name of God is in our breath, right? It's, he gives it, and when it's gone, our soul returns back to its creator, right? When that last breath. Even an atheist speaks his name on his last breath. Think about how powerful that is. These bodies with our breath, we breathe the very name of God with just our life. So how much more should we take care of that? What does that look like? Right? And family, friends, relationships. I know we haven't kind of gone over a lot of these, but 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 then we could we could that could be another couple hour session, right? If we really all talked about, <laughs> you know. Broken relationships, bad relationships, relationships we'd like to mend, how we'd like to take care of our, our relationships that we have and foster them even more. And we get so stinking busy. We're so isolated. The worst thing that's happened to this world, and it's infiltrated the church, is fellowship. The, the smartphones and social media have robbed us of communication and fellowship and togetherness. And we try to keep that going in the church, but even in that, we're struggling. Even as small as we are, where there shouldn't be any problem, us all getting together whenever we wanted, because it shouldn't be that difficult, other than work and sickness and stuff going on, but it's difficult, right? We got our lives so wrapped up in so many things, even if we're not terribly busy, that can, can rob us of that. And we isolate ourselves. We don't know how to communicate anymore. We don't hang out anymore. People don't go over for dinner. I don't. You don't. It's hard. And family dinner's even a hard time. And it's just me and my wife and I, right? <laughs> you know? But it's difficult, those are little things. Your phone's off at the table, right? Turn your phone off. I don't, I don't try. I do it quickly in the morning, but if I'm in prayer, I do not use my phone Bible anymore because too many notifications come over and banners and dings and distractions. Even on that, no, I'm using my Bible app. That's why I told us, let's get rid of them in the church, right? Ding, boom, and then the little app button is right there. You just got to touch that, and then it's a whole different world right there, right? Just get out the anointed word of God. And when you're trying to get along with God, just you and him and his word, probably a whole lot better off, you know, than trying to use technology sometimes. And it's ruining us. And it's, it's, it's really affecting a lot of these areas in our lives and, and robbing us of, of great relationships, not taking care of ourselves, right? Not taking care of our relationships with each other and not taking care of our spiritual relationships with God. So it's a great place for a lot of us to start. It's a journey. To set a goal, to grow yourself, to stretch yourself, to challenge yourself. And um, so I'd like for you to be honest with yourself this week. And I'd like to talk a little bit about it next week, maybe in a little more detail. I just felt like tonight I'd throw this out there and stretch your mind a little bit. Maybe challenge your thinking a little bit. Maybe spend a little bit of time with some of this type of concepts and smart goals and Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. As you as you think about some things, and 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 you, the nice thing about here is everybody here is going to support everybody on whatever journey you're on. I, I support you. I, my 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 blessing in life is to be able to support all of you on your spiritual journey with the Lord, and to try to provide you with anything that you possibly uh, need, and and foster that growth, and and whatever I can do to help. Right. But uh, just think about some of this over the course of this next week. Maybe you got your notepad, you, maybe you scratched down a few things, or you wrote a few of these things down, or a couple of things popped in your head while we were talking tonight, and you've got some ideas. And Think about that. Pray about it a little bit. And, and uh, I don't think we're going to launch into a big, full, let's, re, let's rework Lee Wilt's life next Wednesday night. But, um, but I think if you would all just maybe, what is it that you would, how... In your life, do you want to draw closer to the Lord personally, specifically? And, and if you didn't write down smart, write down that. That's a really good way to, to do that. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound, right? I want to go closer to the Lord. Specifically, how do you want to grow in that? Where are you at now? Where would you like to be? Can you really even get there? Can you get there in a month? Or does it take a, a week or a month or six months or a year? Maybe I should start small and then go big, right? I'd like to read the Bible in, in a full year, but I struggle just getting it out once a day. Well, how about, I, how about I just read a chapter a day, right, and get started and find out that I can actually move my, my time around in my life to where I can at least find dedicated time, and I'm reading a chapter a day in the Bible, and it only takes me about five minutes. Well, I can expand upon that and grow that. Yeah. Do I need to read more or do I need to read better? Do I need to 
crave more, quote unquote, or do I just crave better? You need to get stronger. How can I reach better? Is do I, you know, pull up a uh, a Bible lesson, you know, on audio or YouTube or something, get my Bible out and study the scripture that's being preached upon on and take some journaling notes and things like that? What am I already doing in whatever I'm already doing in the Word of God? How can I make that better and make that quality increase and come? Well, and Brother Jeremy, it goes back to what I said earlier. It's different for everybody. Maybe you do read the Bible through every, every year. That's great. But then you look at that and go, you know what? I do that, but I'm not really getting as much out of it. Maybe, I'll, like you said, maybe this year I'm going to back off and memorize Scripture. I've read the thing through 10, 20 times. 20 times I've read the entire Bible through. Great. But I can't even quote, I can quote Acts 2.38, John 3.16, you know, and you know, Revelation 22, 21. Amen. <laughs> And, oh, Gen 1, 1, in the beginning. Yeah, I got that one, right? <laughs> and then I'm pretty much lost after that. I'm not a good memorization guy. I never, I'm not that smart. I couldn't do that. But I could if I put myself to it. I think if I just picked one, right, and, and started, started. So maybe it's different. Again, like I say, every one of these goals are different for everybody. How do you want to grow closer to the Lord? If that's being able to recite Scripture versus just read the Scripture, that may be different for you, you know. So, but anyways, that's smart just so you can kind of have that. There's different takes on that as well. But, uh, but, but we do that, so. Yeah. There is. Yeah. Flashcards at dinner. There you go. Yeah, you can't just, hey, I want to run a marathon. You don't just go out and run 26 miles today. If you did it, you'd, 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 you'd die. You'd never want to run a marathon again because you would hurt things and break things, right? right? I'm going to walk across the floor. That'll be good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Then I'm going to do it many, many times, and then I'm going to walk to the mailbox every day. And then, yeah, then I'm going to walk to the end of the block. Then I'm going to start running, you know, and I'm going to build my body up for that, right? You just, you, some of those, Brother Josh is perfect. It's something that takes time. It's small, incre incremental steps to get to where you want to go, right? I'd like to be Johnny James, but I'm not going to be that if I just, you know, just blow through stuff and blah, blah, blah. But he was a gifted man, obviously very intelligent, had, had, had a mind for, for retention. I don't. I don't, I don't do that. Is that right, Sister Amy? I'm just kidding, Sister Lisa. <laughs> Good old. All right, why don't you stand to your feet tonight? It's a little after 8 o'clock, now the kids are done. Thank my wife and Sister Bethany. They, they filled in quickly and put something together for the kids tonight. Sister uh, Amaya and Sister uh, uh, Sam and Hunter all, all down with whatever came upon them quickly. So um, hanging out together. I want us to grow. I, I, want us to, I don't want to grow just in number, but I want each and every one of us to grow yeah. in, our, in, in all phases of our lives. Right? I am your pastor, so my primary goal is spiritual leadership. But, but, I, but I don't, if everybody dies and there's no church because we don't take care of ourselves, right? And if we don't, build and foster relationships with family and friends and work on that to grow things. Well, we're not going to win anybody. It's going to be us four no more. We're just going to sit here and all go to heaven together, but not going to take a lot of people with us if we don't learn to foster relationships and family and friends, and, and that's outreach and personal things in our lives and relationship growth, right, and spiritual growth as well. So all three of these things encompass a lot of our lives, and, and um, we can start small, right? I don't care how old you are or how young you are, right? 
It's not about marathons with everybody. Right? Some people are just sprinters. You just do something really good for a short period of time and be really great at it, right? Some people can go long distances, you know? I never forget when Brother Gaddy told me they talked about, you know, praying for an hour, you know? It, it, we had this thing, right? He was a young Christian. He goes, I felt like I had to pray for an hour, you know? I'd, he goes, I'd get down, and man, I'd get at the altar, and I'd go, 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 man, and I'd just, I'd go through everything I'd think, and I got to look down on my watch, and I'm like, that was only 14 minutes. Huh. They said, I got to pray for an hour, <laughs> you know? So now what do I do for the next 46? I've already prayed about everything intently with everything I had passionately with tears and conviction and snot and everything that only took me 14 minutes and now I'm done. But, but if I don't pray an hour, I'm not really accomplished because you have to pray an hour, right? Who said, right? 15 minutes of heartfelt, compassion, intercessory prayer, like to Brother Jeremy's point, right? can move heaven or just an hour of going through the motions. I know we've got the one-hour wheel, and some of that is good if you have an hour, but we don't always have an hour. For me to have, how, how early would you have to get up in the morning to have an hour's prayer time? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> 3, 3.30, <laughs> right? And at times, I do get up that early. There's times that you just wake up, but I, to do that every day, I mean, that would be hard, right? So I got to break it up a little bit. I've got about 10 minutes in the morning, you know, and I still get up at 4.30 right now to lead by 5.30 and to get everything else done that has to be done, right? So um, small goal. I'm reading every day. I'm actually reading more now than I did my old job because my old job, the email started before I ever got out of bed. And I could get up in the morning and just start work. Now I don't have to do that anymore. So now I've got time. And I'm carving out time. And I'm changing my time, you know, with God and the time and the things that I spend doing that. And, um, and you guys get to see the reflections of that, like at 5 a.m., right? Because that's what I've already done, right? So anyway. We'll talk about this, but your assignment for this week, no tests, right, would be think about this. Let's start with the spiritual aspect. What is it that you want to see happen in your personal spiritual life over the, next, over the course of the next year? What is that? And be, re- be willing to share some stuff next week. Put some thought and some prayer into it. Ask God, right? Maybe, it's, maybe you don't even know. Could be you think you're doing okay. I am... What did he say in the church? I am rich and increased with goods and in need of nothing. Me and the Lord are doing okay. I guarantee you if I go home and ask my wife, that, honey, is there something I can do better? I actually, you know what, honey, honey this is probably a dumb question to ask because there's nothing else I can do better as a husband. I've pretty much been 36 years. I've probably got this all nailed, right? So there's really nothing else you need from me or to do. I mean, look, we've been together. We're not divorced. We've had kids. You've got a nice car, your house, and blah, 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 right? So I'm, we're, we're pretty... <laughs> After she slapped me <laughs> and then told me to get out a pen and paper, or let's make a list, right? <laughs> so maybe inquiring of the Lord, Lord, what is it that you would have me do to grow my relationship with you? Maybe some prayer that way this week would allow God to open your eyes up to a few things, right? Some understanding. Ashton, good to have you, man. Love you. And we're going to dinner tomorrow night, so I'm looking forward to that. You know, Going to dinner with anybody at Zach's is good, but going with you will be extra special tomorrow night. So, absolutely. We're going to go to Zach's tomorrow night and have dinner. And uh, I love you all. I want to see us all. Broccoli rice and chicken. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. We won't do that. Chicken what? Chicken thighs. Chicken thighs. Chicken thighs. All right, let's pray a dismissal tonight. Can you say something? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to get that ready. Let's have a prayer cloth, get a prayer cloth together. Do that for, for, for Brother Lee's mom. Pray for that. All right. Um, mm. My goodness. All right. Well, we'll pray and take a prayer cloth. And certainly for Andy, and we'll continue to lift up some of these names. And okay, okay. All right. Let's do that. God's on the move in some lives. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. We need to be ready. We, need to, we personally need to be really ready for what God wants to do in the lives of individuals.
It's time to, time to shake off all the cobwebs from our, from our own lives and be right, ready, available for God to, to reach out and to do what he wants to do in this last day and age. So, amen. Why don't you come on up, Brother Lee? Let's reach my hands on that. Let's pray. Just stretch a hand out for, for Mar Margaret. Margaret. I know he's got one for here. And what's your mom's? Jana. Jana. Mm -hmm. Let's play for, for Jana Wilt. Let's go by Wilt. Lutz. Last name of Jana. Jana Lutz. I don't know if I've ever met your mom. Yeah. At your dad's funeral, was she there? No. Okay, I didn't think so. I don't think I've ever met her, so. Yeah. All right. Well, let's pray right now. Ask God to move in this. And most, you know, for physical healing, but for spiritual renewal as well. Lord, right now, in your name, by your power, by your authority. Lord, pray right now, God, with these special Lord, needs. I pray right now that you would touch. Jaina right now, Margaret right now, these two needs right now, these claws. Lord, the, the, the Bible declares that we can pray. The prayer of the saints, God. Hallelujah. Take a cloth, Lord. Take it to them and transfer it. We empower the authority of the prayer that was given. And I pray right now, God, that you anoint these claws. Set free to heal and to deliver. Not only for the physical healing, but for the spiritual healing, Lord. You're in Jaina's life right now. We stand in agreement, Lord God. The kids would be able to witness Jesus. to you of your love and for, your, good for her and the power and the authority oh, that she can have in her Lord, life back up. And that not just this can be healed, but that her soul can be renewed and life can be restored right now. For this Margaret, yes, Lord God, let Jeremy yes, be a witness and open up a door and an avenue, God, to a greater and a deeper relationship with you that she's ever known possible. We believe it, Lord, as we transfer these claws, these prayers go with them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. All right, let's pray and dismiss. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you, God, for loving us, for caring for us. God, not just for the spiritual things, but you love everything about us. And you're involved and you're so intricately entwined in every fabric of our lives. Lord, we want to make sure that we are giving ourselves to you wholly and with, with our bodies that you have blessed us with with the family and the friends and the relationships that we have fostered and the people that you have placed in our lives and in our walk with you. God, we want to be growing ourselves. We want to be challenging ourselves. We want to be expanding our horizons and our capacities so that we can be all that you want for us to be, that we would take care of what you've given us, that we could move into the lives of family and friends with your truth and your word, and that you and I together, every one of us here, would have such a closeness and such a walk with you, God, like we've never dreamed possible. And I thank you for it. I praise you for it. And we'll always magnify your name in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. I love you this week. So make sure you got your stuff next week. <laughs> we'll see you next. We'll see you Sunday, right? Sunday morning.